Hey everyone, welcome back. So you might have noticed in my last video that there is something different about me, and I don't just mean that post-medication glow. Um, I got breast implants, and it's awesome. Hi, if you don't know me, I am Jen Insight. I talk about books and being a trans woman in America on the internet. If that sounds like something you are interested in, hey, hit that, hit that subscribe button. Ring that little bell. Stick around. Ring my bell. Oops. So, as I said before the title card, I have had bilateral breast augmentation surgery, and I want to talk about it. So, at the time of this recording, I am about four and a half weeks out from the actual surgery, so I've got a little bit of a good view of the before, during, and recovery process, and I kind of want to just share my experience so that if there's anyone out there, trans or otherwise, considering this type of gender-affirming surgery, uh, hopefully this gives you a little peek behind the curtain and you can see if it's right for you. So, let's dive in. In this video, I am going to be breaking down why I got the surgery, what the process of getting it covered by insurance looked like, because it was covered, what the actual process of like the pre-surgery regime, regimen, not regime, not like dictator, dictatorship of the boobs, although, basically like how to take care of yourself before the surgery and after the surgery, and ultimately how I'm feeling about it. Spoiler alert, I love my boobs. So just before we jump into anything, I do want to give you your trigger warnings. Uh, we're going to be discussing gender dysphoria. If you are sensitive to that, maybe this isn't the video for you. Also discussing things that are tangential to surgery, so things like scars, pain, uh, medications, stuff like that. So if those things aren't your bag, baby, I will see you in the next video, which will be a book review of a certain filmmaker who talks like this. What a weird thing to have in a video about my boobs. Why did I want to get breast implants? And the answer is one word, dysphoria. More specifically, gender dysphoria. For those of you who don't know what gender dysphoria is, it is defined as intense feelings of discomfort, panic, pain, what have you, around your physical appearance not matching your gender that you identify with. And for me, I am a binary trans woman. Whether or not the voice makes you think that I would be a non-binary trans femme, I promise you I'm a she, her. And for me, always sort of like the figure of a woman was something that I wanted. Now, I took estrogen. I was on my HRT for about two-ish years when I really started the process of getting this surgery happening. Um, and God bless them, my, my natural boobs, they tried. They tried. They did their best, but they were rather small. For those of you who follow me on the fan sites or on Twitter or Blue Sky, uh, you know what they look like. They're there. You can find them. But I'm six feet tall and roughly 165 to 170 pounds, so those mosquito bites really weren't giving me the features that I wanted for other girls. If that's your thing, power to you. I love small boobs. I was a member. I was the chairman of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. Um, no hate to small boobs. They just weren't for me. And then the last reason why I wanted them, and this is kind of an egotistical reason, and I totally recognize that. Recognizing it doesn't make it better, but here we are. I wanted a bit of wow factor about my appearance. Um, as you can tell, I'm not a quiet looking person. I have the bright purple hair, I have the nails, I have the makeup with like the sort of like atypical look about me. Um, I'm tall. Already that's weird for a lot of girls. And I kind of wanted to finish things off with, you know, a little something extra that would make people go, wow. And trust me, every time I look at them, I go, wow. So I decided I wanted these boobs. How did I go about getting them? So first and foremost, the thing that made me believe that this could be a possibility was one day when I was looking through the insurance sort of like plans and coverages that my company offers, 
uh, I noticed that there was an entire sort of like addendum for just trans-specific healthcare. I opened up the PDF that was like 30 pages long about my specific insurance plan, and lo and behold, a lot of stuff was covered. And not only that, it gave a very clear sort of roadmap of how to get the ball rolling to getting everything covered by the insurance. So once I had that, it was just about hitting the checkpoints to get to what I wanted. The first thing was make sure you are on HRT for at least six months. That check already took care of that long time ago. Ready, keep going. The second thing was a little trickier. It was a letter from a mental health professional saying basically, yes, getting this gender affirming procedure would be good for this person. Which if you're watching this, odds are you already know that. It feels like, duh, obviously. But you have to remember that we are dealing with insurance here and an insurance company's whole job, their whole business model is to deny you service. That's how they make money. They take your premiums, they take your like monthly a little bit out of your paycheck, and then they keep that money. They don't want to give you what you need. So keep that in mind. You're gonna have to be convincing people. I found it relatively easily. Other people have not found it as easy. And oddly enough, getting the letter from a mental health care professional was actually the hardest part of this because not everyone is rated, qualified, I don't even know what to call it, but they can't do it apparently unless they have some magical piece of paper that says they are allowed to make this distinction. And a lot of people who put LGBTQ issues on their sort of like about me thing on psychology today actually don't really know what they're talking about a lot of the time. So it was finding someone who was qualified, licensed, what have you, to be able to get me that letter. And I had to suffer through a few really bad therapists to finally get to the person I needed to get to, and then I promptly ghosted that whole company because none of them were working with me. My new therapist, however, she's great. I love Tammy. Tammy, if you're watching, you're the best. After I had the letter, that's when things really started accelerating quickly. I reached out to the advocate group that my company has, sort of as like the liaison between insurance, the company, and me. <laughs> Someday we'll find it. And really, these people were the star of the show. If your company has these, awesome, use them. If they don't, encourage your company to get them. I remember when I called to start getting the process going, the person on the other side of the phone asking all the right questions in all the right ways. When I was saying I wanted top surgery, she asked, are we going to be adding to or taking away from what is already there? And I said, oh, I want breast augmentation surgery adding to, and this woman and I hope her crops are forever watered and she gets good nights of sleep every night, literally goes to me, girl. It was probably one of the most gender affirming moments of my life. It was, I hope she wins the lottery. And then that group of advocates, they found me a selection of surgeons I could choose from. I picked one that was 20 minutes down the road because convenience. And then I set up a consultation. So the consultation for me was actually really fascinating because I was brought into this little room. Uh, a nurse spoke with me, sort of said like, hey, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish here? Tell me a little bit about your journey, which sidebar, I hate it when people say, tell me about your journey, when they mean like, hey, tell us about being trans and whatnot. Like, just ask the questions you wanna ask, like, especially in a medical setting. I'm autistic, I need you to ask me specific questions because I don't know what that means. But anyways, I said, hey, I tall, I want boob. Um, so then we set about the process of sizing, which was awesome. For, this is this was the coolest part of everything beforehand. This is the coolest part now, but everything beforehand, this was the coolest part. They gave me a bra, and they brought in this like briefcase full of all of these like silicone chicken cutlet looking things that I would then slide into the cuffs to simulate how big my boobs would be at the particular CC of implant. So messed around a little bit. I was gonna be like around a 300. I was like, oh, this looks good. And then the nurse, God bless her, was like, hey, what happens? Let's just take a look. Just for, just for the sake of argument, just hypothetically speaking, what if we looked at the 450 cc's? And I said, you are so real for that. Slid them into the bra and immediately was like, yes, 
these are the ones that I want. Hold on to that thought because it'll be funny later. Settled on 450 cc's and then actually met with the plastic surgeon who was fantastic, love this man. He is just like, so fabulous. Fabulous is the right word for this man. He comes in, you can tell that he is a plastic surgeon. There's not an ounce of buccal fat on this man to be found. He looks like handsome Squidward, but like as a man and actually handsome. And we discussed a little bit around like, hey, what is the process of going as flat as I am to as big as I want to go? Which these are not the 450 cc's, these are 250 cc's. And that is because he explained to me, because I am so thin and we want to go so big, we kind of have to stage. So what that means is I have the smaller ones to stretch out the skin, make it ready for the bigger ones about five months from right now. Because if I went straight to the big ones, I would have some gnarly stretch marks. No hate to people with stretch marks. I know they're a natural part of being alive and having a body, but if I can avoid them, I'm gonna avoid them. So from there, I was getting the prior authorization from my insurance and just waiting. That's something that you will learn in this process there is a lot of. There is a lot of waiting. Waiting to be on HRT long enough, waiting to get your letter, waiting to get a consult, waiting to get your prior authorization, waiting for the day of surgery to arrive once you have that prior authorization. Which brings me to, once I had a date, I was given a very clear set of instructions to follow that involved taking Tylenol a certain amount of time out, stopping any sort of smoking three weeks before uh, the surgery date. Luckily, I don't vape or smoke cigarettes. The only stuff that I would ingest that way is um, different, but luckily there is a uh, uh, oral way to do that. Don't say oral edibles. That's my preferred method, so perfect. Then there's the cessation of certain medications, like you can't take Advil or any sort of like ibuprofen, like blood thinner within a certain amount of time because that will mess with like your healing and your ability to like clot and all of that sort of fun stuff. And then the night before, I had to sort of like wipe down my chest with these special like wipes. They were almost like the Swiffer wet wipes, but for my chest, apparently. Um, I don't know if it's because I have a dirty chest, but uh, it, it smelled bad, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Day arrives of the surgery, and you have to make sure you have someone who can drive you to and from, because you are just like out of it after you come out of surgery. For any of you who have had um, any sort of major surgery, you know you're just out of it for like the next, the rest of the day, basically. So show up, lots more waiting. Finally, nurse comes in and we're taking vitals and all this sort of fun stuff. And then they're trying to put in the IV. They try to put it in my hand, but apparently I don't have veins in my hand because they just couldn't hit it. So we ended up doing it up here, more waiting. And then eventually they came to wheel me into the operating room. And it was actually really funny because the uh, anesthesiologist was there and he fiddled with my IV bag and then was like, all right, I just gave you your first cocktail. You'll be feeling it any moment. I went, oh, there it is. And then I woke up and I had boobs. Awesome. From there, the next couple days, I had to take it easy. Not a lot of like motion. I've got a lot of my range of motion back, but like I never had a lot of it to begin with, but I can like, lift my arms up right now, which I could not do for like a week after the surgery. I was only out of work for about four days. I got the surgery on a Friday. I was back to work Tuesday. And honestly, that was like a really good like time frame for me. I also historically have a really high pain tolerance. Every piercer, tattoo artist, uh, eyebrow tech, Everyone I've ever been in that sort of relationship with has told me, hey, you aren't really flinching. That's unsettling. But as a result, I did not need to take any of the pain medication that they prescribed me, which is great because that pain medication, that was some gnarly stuff that I did not want to get hooked on. So what has it been like since then? Well, it's been awesome. The implants start very high, on you, so you need to like encourage them to go down, which like you do literally this 
like massage motion and for a while I also wore like this resistance band around my chest pretty much all day every day to the point where I felt like they were in a good spot. Now I really just wear it to sleep. I don't even really have to do that. I just am a real stickler me seeks. But here even four and a half weeks out I'm really enjoying the shape that they have. I'm really enjoying the sensation that they have. Just having them running has been the most like interesting thing. Um, and of course, I'm showing them to anyone who asks. Literally anyone who wants to see my boobs. I'm just like, whoop, here they are. I didn't get these for people to not look at them. I had to have that discussion in like a group of uh, like more sapphic leaning individuals who are all just like laser focused in on my eyes. And I was like, y'all, it's okay to look. I got these for people to look at them. Here you go. I've even let a few people touch them. It's great. And I'm excited to really be able to do everything I did before at the six week mark. So I've got about a week and a half before I can go back to wearing a normal bra as instead of like this like sports bra adjacent surgery bra that they have me in and getting back into the gym because now that I have these, I really want to make sure the bottom matches the top in that I want to be built like a Pixar mom. So what's the verdict? Obviously I love them. I love these, I love the way I look with them, I love the confidence that they give me, I love the way that they make me look, they are so great, I love my boobs. And I, when I tell you I cannot wait, cannot wait to get to the final size, which I kind of want to bump up from the 450s to like a 500 or something, maybe not 600. I know someone who has 600s, and those things are huge. Not 600, but I cannot wait to achieve my final form. And that makes me think about just gender affirming care in general. It's not just for trans people, right? There are plenty of cis women out there who are uncomfortable with their smaller chests. Get bigger chests, girl. There are many out there uncomfortable with their larger chests. Get a smaller chest, girl. That's a little more difficult, I'm not gonna lie to you, but like, take care of yourselves. This is the only body we get, and if we can do something to feel more at home and comfortable in it, we should be able to do that. And anyone should be able to get these gender-affirming procedures covered by their insurance. I was profoundly lucky that I work for a company that offers this. Not many do. And I don't want there to be this gatekeeping around who can get what done to their bodies. It's our bodies. Gender-affirming care is healthcare, and it's not just for trans people. So there you have it, my friends. That is my experience with bilateral breast augmentation, aka a boob job. Uh, I hope I've answered some questions or pointed some people in the right direction, if that is something that you are considering. Um, I also hope that if people just like hearing me talk about my boobs, I hope I fulfilled your expectations. <laughs> I will be back next time with a video on books this time, and really I'm just happy to be making these videos again. So if you want to hang around, you want to see the next one, you want to see, you want to see the future, hit that subscribe, ring up the bell, and then follow me in these other places right here, so Twitch and Instagram at Jen underscore Insight, and here on YouTube and TikTok as just Jen Insight, okay? Thank you so much for hanging out. I will see you next time. Love ya.